Hello. Hi, Julia. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. And thanks no again worries. for accepting my invitation and say yes. It's a big thing for me. Yeah, thanks a lot. No worries at all. It's a pleasure to speak to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So what about the weather over there, Julia? So I'm in the south of Spain and it's really, I mean, it's amazing weather at the moment. It's reaching about 40 degrees Um, the oh. last, yeah, the last few weeks has been 40. So it's pretty hot, which means I'm kind of locked inside with the <laughs> air con on. Um, but it's lovely. It's really lovely. It's better than the UK, which is apparently just raining all the time at the moment. So. The same here, actually, it's been, I would say, three to four days and it's been raining over here. And oh, it's wow. still... And whereabouts... Whereabouts are you? Uh, I'm talking to you from India. Hey, okay. yeah. I've never, I've never been, but my partner went to India recently, um, so I'll have to tell him, and he might, he might know where you are. So, oh, great, <laughs> great, great. So, uh, Julia, this is very first time. So, would you like to introduce yourself in front of my audience, please? Yeah, of course. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Julia. I'm from the UK, but I've been living in Spain for. Four years, it'll be four years in September. Mm -hmm. I started, I had a bit of a weird, weird career. Um, I started as, I was an actor for a while and then I worked for charities in the UK and then I started teaching English mm -hmm. and then I moved into something slightly more different than not just kind of your traditional English teaching but I moved into communication coaching mm -hmm. but with a focus on non-native speakers mm -hmm. so people that are speaking English as their second language mainly at work mm -hmm. um, and because it was something I'd realized when I so I've been learning Spanish for the last four years mm -hmm. and I I have no problem communicating in English, but when it came to communicating in Spanish, especially in front of kind of in group situations or in front of audiences, mm -hmm. it became really, really difficult. And then I noticed the same thing when I was speaking to these amazing people who had this fantastic level of English, yes. then getting to the point in those kind of client meetings or public speaking or anything like that, their mm -hmm. confidence just really, really dropped. So that's yes. the main thing I work on yes. at the moment is kind of helping people with their confidence and breaking through those kind of mental blocks that they have with their English. Great, great. I would say like I recently, I have started the, uh, this work to connect myself internationally, Julia, so that as a tutor, I can also learn something different culture and different ways of teaching. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it is undeniable that learning is an online process. Endless journey it is. You can learn anywhere from anybody. So somewhere for my Indian people, the learner who is like somewhere struggling with this language, they are lacking in their confidence also. So that's why I took this initiative. Okay, if I can interact, anybody can. And I visited your profile. It is so effective. And you mentioned over there so beautifully that especially you are supporting professional women to communicate. Right. So what are the challenges? Something is different when it comes uh, to professionalism, especially for women, according to you. What kinds of challenges? Mm. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. So, yeah, yeah I think. One of the main things when I'm coming into contact with women who are struggling with it is this, this want to be concise and clear with what they are saying in English. Mm -hmm. And especially a lot of the time I'm finding I'm working with women who are in very, very male dominated environments. Yes. yes. <laughs> so when, when we're in male dominated environments for women, we have just a slightly different communication style, our, our general kind of the where we're most comfortable in our communication style. Yes. It's very empathetic. It's very, I'm going to listen to what you're saying and then respond. But when the women I'm working with are working in these environments where it's very, very masculine, mm -hmm. it's hard. It's hard to communicate in that way because it's not the yes. way that the, the organization works. It's much more direct, much it, it's just, it's just a different style and so what happens is that women generally then they feel 
that their English isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. They feel that they mm -hmm. should be behaving in a different way yes. and that, they, that they're not good at their role. A lot yes. of the time they get to the point where they think, I'm just not yes. good enough for this. Yes. So I do a lot of work around self-worth and mm -hmm. kind of looking at that. Okay, let's look at the facts here. What, what evidence do you have? This is all, these are all the ways that you're great at your job. These are all the ways that you're great at your work. Yes. Let's work on that and let's see. And all of the things that you can accomplish in English um yes. so I think that's that's probably the main difference in terms of male like kind of men and women that's the main difference and then I think across the board mm -hmm. there's this thing of wanting it to be perfect yes um wanting the English to be perfect all the time <laughs> and so I do I do a lot of work with my clients on kind of breaking down that kind of expectation mm -hmm. that perfection is the is the way to to do mm -hmm. it yeah. And I think one more thing I want to add on over here. Uh, this is a question again. Like as a tutor, I analyzed it, uh, Julia, all the time. This confidence is really so miserable. And the irony is that there is no institute. Nobody can teach you, guide you in such a beautiful manner so that you can cultivate your confidence. You can up your confidence level. So it is very challenging to during the process of this learning to keep them motivated all the time. So yeah. how yeah. do you do that, Julia? Please tell me, because I have seen some videos of yours uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. It's completely so positive. I would say really I would appreciate for that. It's very positive yeah. videos. That's good. Yeah, no. So I think this idea of confidence, it's kind of this thing that people... They look at people speaking in a way that they want to speak and they go, oh, I want to speak like that. They're so confident. They're so yes. great at that. How do I, how, how do I become that confident? Mm -hmm. And my, my theory is that no one is confident and no one is not confident. Mm -hmm. What it is, is confidence is a skill and it's yes. a skill that you, that you have to learn, develop yes. in order to become confident in certain mm -hmm. situations. Because mm -hmm. for example, I'm confident in my in my role in terms of what I do with my communication clients. Yes. I'm I I'm, that's where I'm most confident. But it's mm -hmm. because I've practiced a lot. It's because I spent a lot yes. of time doing it. It's because I I I have the experience to become confident in that. Yes. But if someone asks me to go and I don't know, if someone asked me to go and try and drive a car for the for, for Formula One or something like that. It would be a completely different story yes. and I wouldn't be confident. Yeah. So it's it's not necessarily that you're that I'm just a confident person in whatever I do. It's not yes. that. And so the aim is not, oh, how do I become confident? It's like, what skills do I need to develop in order to grow my confidence? And so I think okay. in terms of keeping kind of motivated in that in that yeah. challenge and that process is difficult. I mm -hmm. think one of the things that is really helpful is I call it like um, a ladder of progress mm -hmm. and kind of having the the main goal. So, for example, if somebody wanted to, oh, I want to deliver a presentation in front of mm -hmm. 200 people in English mm -hmm. and that's their main goal. Mm -hmm. But maybe to go from where they are now to going to that, that's a huge jump and that can be really yes. overwhelming and scary and you can lose that motivation and all of that. So I ask people to kind of, okay, so what's the first step mm -hmm. on the ladder in order to get to that end goal? What's yes. just the first step you need to do? And it might be, okay, yeah. I need to deliver a presentation to five of my friends. And so you just go step by step and step and by breaking that yes. goal down, it becomes much more achievable, I think, and also much more motivating because it doesn't feel so big and scary. Very good, yeah. I completely concur with your all, uh, like all these ideas, because I think if you are under a process and you want to accomplish something, there is a goal in your mind, you have to achieve it inch by inch. You can't take a long jump. Otherwise, yeah. you can yeah. <laughs> hamper yourself, right? <laughs> so it's a wonderful yeah, idea. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It becomes, and those big jumps, because they're so much harder, those really yeah. big jumps, we're much more likely to make mistakes or to fail or we, and we get disappointed yeah. in ourselves and then yes. we just want to stop trying. So breaking it down into those smaller yes. steps, we end up being much kinder to ourselves, I think, in the process. Yes. And I think we should take only baby steps. 
initially if yeah. you want to strike up something let's talk about me julia you know i am very comfortable now when i am having this conversation but honestly speaking it was really very challenging as well for me earlier to connect to myself internationally somewhere there is a fear in the mind of learners especially i'm talking uh, about indian people so how to make them understand would you like to give some suggestions how to uplift that kind of listening skills mm, that's a great question yes. so i think so speed is one of the things that is mm -hmm. really challenging for yes. second language speakers mm -hmm. and i think it also comes from the fact that actually native native speakers have to take responsibility yes. as well yeah. and that's one of the things yeah. that I'm really passionate about I work with organizations and mm -hmm. I think there is there is a gap yes. there are a lot of second language speakers yes. that work so hard to get their English up to a fantastic standard yes. and then they go into the workplace mm -hmm. and then they have native or first language speakers mm -hmm that don't know how to communicate yes. with second language speakers because they don't have the same level of empathy. Mm -hmm. so, so someone that has done, has learned a second language themselves, they'll understand, okay, maybe I need to slow down here. Maybe yes. I need to check, oh, have you understood that? Or maybe I need to say things in a more simple and clear way. Yes. So I think there is a big responsibility because now as well, organizations in general they are so much more international you could be in a team with 10 people from 10 different countries and so yes. first language speakers need to get better at understanding how to communicate yes. uh, in English with international speakers because mm -hmm. the other thing as well is that English first first <laughs> language English speakers are the worst communicators in terms of our English we mm -hmm. are terrible communicators because we rely on idioms and we rely yes. on slang and we so we don't think about it whereas yes. actually if you were in a room and mm -hmm. everyone was a second language speaker yes. everyone would understand okay we need to communicate on a level that everybody understands yes. so I think the first thing I would say is for people that are struggling with speed or anything mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. you are not you are there's there are things you can do to improve but you mm -hmm. are not the problem there is there is nothing wrong <laughs> with you for finding it difficult mm -hmm. because it is it is difficult mm -hmm. I think one of the things I think that helps with speed because I think sometimes speed combined with accent is really yes. difficult and so one of the things that I do with my clients who are working in international teams and mm -hmm. they say to me, oh, I've there's this person, I just don't understand their accent and it's really, really difficult. Yes. So what I get them to do is I get them mm -hmm. to go and have a conversation with that person at work wow. and find out exactly where they're from. Wow, great. And then what we do in our sessions mm -hmm. is we find videos and interviews of people from that same place. Okay. So if they're... For example, if there's somebody and they're from Scotland, for example, I will mm -hmm. go and find a load of videos and content mm -hmm. that people can listen to. Because when we struggle with accent and speed, it's because we're just not used to it. So we yes. have to get used to it. And mm -hmm. rather than getting used to it in the moment when you're mm -hmm. feeling pressurized because you're in the moment at work or anything like that, mm -hmm. outside of those situations, if you can spend mm -hmm. time listening to videos or listening to interviews of mm -hmm. that, kind of that speed or with the accent mm -hmm. that can then help you a lot when you go into those real life situations mm -hmm. and I think another thing this sounds very very silly but YouTube <laughs> videos is for, it's really helpful YouTube mm -hmm. videos if you watch them yes. at one 1.5 times the speed mm -hmm. for example yes your brain will catch up to that yes, speed correct so then when you are then going into circumstances where people are speaking a bit yes. more quickly Mm -hmm. you can then you'll then have be in a much better yes. position to be able to understand at that speed so those would be my my tips I think it's very authentic I would say whatever you are telling me it is very I can feel very connected because it is very pure I would I would say and the thing is that you can increase there is a beautiful option to increase the speed of the video 
first you can go with yeah. one then 1.2.5 like like little by little you can increase the speed of the video and you can uh, increase the level of listening right and that's how yeah. i can we all can increase the listening skills yeah absolutely and i think the other thing is if somebody ever asks me for example if I'm speaking to somebody and someone says to me Julia could you could you slow down <laughs> I'm always I'm always so horrified I'm like oh I'm sorry I'm so sorry I've been speaking too quickly yes of course so okay. I think the other thing is don't be afraid yes. to ask somebody to slow down down because yes. Yes. just say sorry could you could you speak a bit more slowly, slowly and yes. if they're a if they're a good human being Yes. they will be very happy happy to do yes. that for you so yeah thank you so much for using this statement i would say there is no harm because somewhere people tend to feel very apprehensive or shy sometimes feel hesitant okay how to ask it means they blame themselves okay i'm not good enough in listening and i'm not able to understand as you mentioned is it is a wonderful point we should say like this okay please it's a, a humble request from my end could you slow down please so that i can uh, comprehend whatever you are saying so there is no harm Absolutely. even you if you are not understanding um, any query whatever it is you can ask again please with the politeness yeah. Absolutely. That's yeah, it. Absolutely. It's very simple, I think, Julia. <laughs> we are making it complicated sometimes. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So one more thing I want to know. You used our presentation and I came across so many videos in that particular, like seasoned trainer are making such kind of a statement and somewhere I agree with that one also. When you are delivering a speech and when it comes to public speaking or communication, so presentation matters a lot. The way you are using your body language, more some someone says like that, okay, 50%, someone 70%. So what is your uh, insights regarding this? Mm, okay, so... That's really interesting. So I used to use I used to use the there's there's a there's a study and I can't remember. I think it was something like sixty something percent, thirty something percent, and seven percent. Or there was some stat and it was like sixty four percent is your body yes. language. Yes. And actually, when you when you look into that study mm -hmm. in detail and that research mm -hmm. in detail, it's a little bit it's a little bit misleading it's not entirely true because they were looking the it doesn't protect, it doesn't relate directly to presenting mm -hmm. so i think body language is important mm -hmm. but it's an important addition to what you are saying because mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's a way to keep people engaged i mm -hmm. think i think your body language can keep people engaged mm -hmm. i think one of the main things is to keep your body language open Mm -hmm. So as soon as you close up like this, it's really hard for the audience to connect with you. Yes. So keeping your body language open. I think the other thing is that gestures, I, I speak with a lot of gestures. I do that naturally. Yes. <laughs> when when you're presenting, it's important not to use gestures mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. you want to use gestures. There okay. should be a point. Mm -hmm. to using your gestures okay. so for example I talk about in in presenting specifically mm -hmm. you want to match the gestures to the words so for yes. example if I was saying if I was delivering something on business and I was talking about something increasing or decreasing okay. I might say and so here it increases mm -hmm. and here it decreases yes. and you see those gestures then match what I'm saying so we want to help paint a picture with yes. with the gestures that we're using mm -hmm. so that's something else I think if you if you are nervous if someone is nervous when they're delivering presentations mm -hmm. yes. you don't need you don't need to move necessarily it's okay to stand still mm -hmm. if you feel comfortable you can you can maybe move around the space mm -hmm. but if it's going to make you more nervous mm -hmm. there's no harm in just standing standing still with your feet grounded on the mm -hmm. floor and just delivering your presentation from one spot there is there is no mm -hmm. there's no harm you're not doing any harm by doing that mm -hmm. so I think 
body language is definitely yeah definitely an addition but I almost think of it in that way that I've talked about those steps yes. maybe the first thing is I just need to deliver a presentation mm -hmm. and deliver the words that I need to say in the way I want to say it and that that's my first goal and then the next time you do it, okay, maybe I can add some gestures in now. So you don't need to add everything into your presentation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the very first few times you're doing it. It can mm -hmm. just be a process of going, okay, I've got here. Now what can I do to make it better? And what can I do to make it better? Mm -hmm. The the one tip I would probably give if you're if somebody is preparing for a presentation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's it's very hard beforehand to know how we look to our audience if we because we're not looking at ourselves mm -hmm. so I would say recording recording ourselves mm -hmm. is really important to then look oh. back on it and mm -hmm. there's someone I can't remember his name mm -hmm. there's someone on um, social media called I think it's called Ask Vin mm -hmm. is his is his Instagram handle and he does a lot on public speaking mm -hmm. and he talks about mm -hmm. recording mm -hmm. and then he talks about looking at the recording once mm -hmm. with just the sound so you don't look at the screen and you just hear how you are saying the words oh, whether you're okay. it's all kind of one level or whether you're giving it light and shade and all mm -hmm. of those kinds of things mm -hmm. and then you you do it again but this time you turn the volume down and you mm -hmm. just look at how you how you are presenting because then what you can do is you can concentrate on that body language you yes. can you can see what you're doing. So it's a nice way to break up the speech from the body language. But I think, yeah, the body language is, I think, again, a skill. Yes. It's a skill that you develop over time. So okay. just add in, add in as you go along, um, bit by bit, step by step, and it'll become much more fluid and easier for people. Yes. Again, like at the end, we can say like practice is needed all the time. Whatever your goal is, if you want to achieve that one, you are passionate about it. So without worrying about the consequences more, try to focus what you want to do. Try to do practice accordingly. I think, Julia, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. I think the practice yeah. thing, a lot of people say, oh, I did a presentation and it was, it went horribly, yes. for their example. And I say to them, okay it, it probably didn't go horribly but mm -hmm. okay uh what what did you what did you do in kind of preparation yes. and they say oh I didn't I didn't really prepare I just I just yes. knew what I was going to say and they went and then I yes. did the presentation mm -hmm. and actually planning this planning and preparing yes. what you're going to say is only part of it then you need to get up and practice okay how am I going to stand what am I going to do when I'm on the stage or when yes. I'm actually presenting so that is a big part of the preparation as well so yeah that practicing and that preparing and that rehearsing for the presentation yes. is really important as well and one practical thing we have to understand so minutely that this is our brain we have to all the time before doing anything taking any kind of an action we should try to train it give a message give a signal so that our brain can prepare accordingly okay we are preparing something i think it would be helpful for them as well yeah so yeah yes. absolutely i think i think it's uh when whenever we're doing something new mm -hmm. yeah we're having to train we're having to train our yes. brain for that new thing and if you think about it I don't know if you get to a certain point in your life mm -hmm. and you're doing something for the first time yes you're having to rewrite all of your past experiences to then do this one thing for the first time so it's yes. it's normal if it feels a bit scary and a bit weird and yes. it feels uncomfortable because mm -hmm. it's the first time we're doing something and especially yes. as adults I think doing new things and learning new things as an adult is quite a scary process yes but as an adult we should take the challenge <laughs> and enjoy the process with this is my yeah. that's it <laughs> I yeah enjoy the process say, yeah enjoy it this is a one life <laughs> so try to enjoy yeah. it that's it okay no need to be like hesitant to do something to take the initiative if something is new for you very first time you are going to do it okay try to enjoy it. that's it you are going to learn yeah. something at least yeah yeah absolutely you're going to learn something no matter what happens you're going to learn something so yeah I think you're absolutely right just 
try and enjoy it as much as you can yes and one more thing because i want to know any two and three tips from your end for my audience for learners whoever like is struggling uh, they have the de- they have a desire to be public speaker so any strong two and three tips from your end for them oh so this is for people that are wanting to get into public speaking kind yes. of tips for them okay yes, yes julia hmm. that's a good question so i think the when I think a lot of people focus mm-hmm. on how am I going to do this presentation yes. and what 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 can I do to make this the best presentation and that's mm-hmm. brilliant mm-hmm. but often we forget with public speaking mm-hmm. we forget about the audience mm-hmm. and yes. the audience has to be the main focus of our attention and so before anybody prepares to do anything with presentations Mm -hmm. it has to be okay why is the audience going to care Mm -hmm. why are they interested in what I have to say Mm -hmm. and build some build what you're going to say and what you're going to do around Mm -hmm. around that Mm -hmm. um because unless you're doing that the audience won't they won't connect with what you're saying it has to you have to think about what you're going to do for them and what do you want them to do because Mm -hmm. of that your presentation so that's one thing never forget the audience and then the next thing which I think often gets forgotten about is your voice okay and that you want to use your voice like Mm -hmm. it's an instrument your voice can do many many different things and we forget that sometimes (laughs) yeah and so and what often happens is some public speakers will Mm -hmm. they'll speak in this very monotonous tone and they will just speak at this one level and it becomes very very it it becomes tiring for the audience and they Mm -hmm. zone out and they stop listening so what you want to do is you want to change your voice and you want to emphasize certain words and you want to change your pitch and also one tip and this is an exercise that people can do okay is to look at how you can change a sentence based mm-hmm. on which word you mm-hmm. focus on in a sentence mm-hmm. so but for example mm-hmm. the sentence I didn't know he said that mm-hmm. I didn't know he said that is the sentence but if I said I didn't know he said that mm-hmm. I'm the emphasis mm-hmm. on me it was me on that didn't me, know yes, correct. and if it's a if I said I didn't know he said that maybe I thought someone else said that and yes. the emphasis on I didn't know he said that Yes. Or I didn't know he said that. Mm-hmm. The most interesting part of the thing is about what he said. So by looking at the kind of the most important mm-hmm. bits in someone's presentation, for example, look at how you can how how the sense of a sentence changes based on what you what mm-hmm. you emphasize. So yes. for the really important bits, just really look at how you're how you're saying a sentence. And often for second language speakers as well. Mm-hmm it's difficult sometimes because we emphasize different yes. different words from where we naturally would mm-hmm. so just having an idea of that is really useful that's another tip I would yes. give wow great thank you so much because I have some advanced student so they are struggling in that way so somewhere I'm trying to make them understand but the way you expounded all these things I would say I have to appreciate you so it is very challenging, I would say, Julia, and you made it very easy with a beautiful example. <laughs> Brilliant. No, it's an absolute pleasure. You're you are very, very welcome. <laughs> Thanks. One more question there is, and it is very relatable, relatable. You can relate with that one. And I watched actually one of your videos over there related to that one you uh, explained that, yes, 25% people are native speakers. So no need to run behind that because, you know, Julia, like personally, I want to share that thing. I have seen like learners somewhere they want to change their accent and all, right? And that's why they tend to watch so many native speakers they are following and they are struggling and they sometimes they get demotivated as well. But again, you said in that particular video, try to interact internationally. That is so beautiful. So please yeah. <laughs> elaborate that one also for me, Julia. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a real challenge, especially for the non-native teachers. Yeah. It's a real challenge because everybody is, oh, I want a native speaker. I want a native speaker yeah. to teach me. And 
And I, I understand where that has come from. But actually, now it's not very useful because, yeah, like you, like I said in the video, such a small percentage of English speakers are yes. native speakers. Yes. Much more, you're much more likely to be in a conversation yes. with a group of international second language speakers than you are with a group of all native speakers. Mm -hmm. So often, if people have only ever interacted with a native speaker when they're learning the language, yes. they then go into the real world and then they're suddenly, oh, well, this person's, they're not speaking in a British accent. They're speaking yes. in a, they're speaking English, but with a Spanish accent or they're speaking yes. English, but with a Russian accent like, or a Polish accent or a French yes. accent, whatever it might be. They're speaking in these different accents. So actually having a range of accents uh, that you are able to interact with and understand will be far more beneficial. And also, yes. if you are somebody that can understand multiple accents that are speaking English, you become yes. really valuable because not many people can do it because people are so okay. focused on how to understand native speakers. But actually, if you can say, yeah, I can understand to everybody because I have worked with lots of different accents. Yes. And you'll also get a much more rounded understanding mm -hmm. of how English is because English is there is not just British and American Australian yes. South African English 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 is a international it's it comes from everywhere and so yeah. that everyone has a different way of speaking it so yeah. having a really clear understanding of that is going to be much more beneficial yes. than just speaking to native speakers yes I feel the same Julia and I think I'm able to understand you because clarity is there. So I think as a speaker, mm -hmm. if you are learning this language, so first the focus uh, should be the clarity of your sentence, the clarity, the pronunciation. Accent and there are multiple accents. It's really very challenging to follow a single one even. Yeah. And and that's that's what when people say to me, Oh, I want to I want to have a I want to get rid of my accent. I want to have a British accent. Yes. And I say, well, which, which British accent do you yeah, want to have? Because yeah. in in Britain alone, there are more than 40 accents. Yes. So you can't, that, that accent reduction and trying to get rid of your accent, I think is, it, it, it's, it shouldn't be the aim because I love speaking to people with different accents because it tells me that there is, there's a story there. Yes. And it tells me, wow, this person has, learned to speak English yes. and they're speaking in a second language isn't that amazing so I think there is such a value to having an accent and yeah you're right the pronunciation and the clarity yes. is much more important yes. than not having an accent so yeah. yeah I totally agree and Julia that's why I'm interacting uh, with speakers internationally so that the audience can understand the learners can understand easily okay you have to clear with your thoughts, with your sentence. And also, I would say the pronunciation is a huge part. You have to work on that one rather than focusing yeah. on accent as well, I would say. And you can increase yeah. your level. That's it. And when it comes to tone, whatever it is, whatever your personality is, try to take it posi uh, positively, I would say. That's it. Yeah, try to absolutely. carry yourself in a positive manner. That's it, I think. Yeah. It will work for you. So thank you so <laughs> much, Julia. It's really so insightful session with you and also knowledgeable too, I would say. If you have any question for me, you can shoot before wind up the session, yeah. please. Yeah, I would love to just know a bit more about how how did you start doing what you're doing and how did you get from where you started to where you are now? I'm, I'd am i love to hear that story. Okay, okay. So this is a little bit I will uh, sum up by using few sentences. So I am a mother also. I would say, Julia, I'm a mother, a homemaker, a housewife. And it's been 15 years of my marriage. And I took a long pause in between and it was really difficult for me. Like I would say before my marriage, I used to teach English for three years, I would say. And right now I'm carrying only four plus experience in this field. But yes, it was challenging, but I worked so hard. It was really very challenging for me to understand this language, to interact internationally. But I realized, you know, I can do that somewhere. Whatever my tone is, whatever my personality is, 
my desire is very strong determination is there i am passionate so i can do that and i would say only with the help of practice consistency and i would like to highlight the loud reading what i have been doing each single day still i am doing in the morning so these are few things i am doing and that's how i started my career and now i am working professional but yes still learning attitude is there and that's why i am interacting and having this kind of wonderful session internationally so that i can make others learn learning journey so easy they can learn something in a very easy and beautiful manner it's easy That's english is super easy <laughs> only be consistent <laughs> and try to devote some time over there that's it <laughs> that's brilliant and what's been the um what's been the biggest challenge for you in kind of developing your english to where it is now what has been the most difficult thing for you i think the most difficult part uh, i would like to mention the speaking one because somewhere i'm graduate in uh, english literature and uh, i completed my pg in computer application as well but the thing is that critical knowledge is not going to work for anybody so somewhere i was aware about present past future but when it comes to speaking the same like had happened with me then i realized the no radio you have to speak practically and then i started yeah. my journey okay loud reading and listening then i started to listen to different native speakers and i started my journey firstly to take some sessions on audio call to make myself comfortable after a couple of mm -hmm. months uh, i started to take online sessions uh, via video call then i started i took the third step uh, with the help of linkedin i would say thank you so much linkedin now i am interacting internationally because it is also somewhere i am identifying what is my comfort zone and i'm trying to overcome that's it yeah yeah that's fantastic <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> yes that's because great. learning always like learning is there at the age of 40 i would like to mention my age is 4040 and i'm carrying this kind of attitude of learning i want to devote mm -hmm. my life only for learning and to help my student Yeah. That's yeah. a brilliant goal. I love the goal. Thank you very much. It's been <laughs> it's been so great to talk to you. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for be with me, Julia. It's really I can't say sometimes it makes me so speechless when I'm connecting these people are you people are very supportive and that's why it is a kind of an encouragement for me as well. So can I look that's can brilliant. look forward? Yeah. Yeah yeah it's a pleasure and if you ever if you ever need anything else just um let me know thank you so much thank you julia thank you <laughs> okay no problem at all okay. brilliant brilliant thanks okay, very much so, yeah bye have a wonderful time julia you too bye bye